I want you to be the top 1%. Programming or coding is not equal to software engineering. The advice I always tell people is use every unfair advantage you have. Hi everyone, so today I am with Rahul. Rahul, how are you doing there? I am fantastic, how about you? I'm doing great as well. Uh, let's go back to a computer science graduate, right? Who is just coming out of college. What should he or she know? How can they prepare for getting opportunities in this market, which isn't flourishing with great opportunities and companies hiring all over the world? So what can they do? How can they stand apart from the crowd? Okay, so the first thing I'll say is that you are entering into, unfortunately, one of the worst job markets for a computer science graduate, or frankly, any graduate probably in a decade or longer. And that sucks, I'm sorry. Um, but that's the state of the world right now. I have two pieces of advice. Number one is that the beautiful thing about our industry, the tech industry, software, is that in many ways, you can manufacture your own experience. So even if you're having a really hard time getting a job, there is no gatekeeper. There is no one who can prevent you from taking your laptop and then building an iPhone app, an Android app, publishing a website that is actually really powerful and beneficial. And if you can do that enough, not only will you feel more confident, but I can guarantee that that will look very impressive as part of your portfolio to land a job in the future. So that's tip number one, just build things and create your own experience. You don't have to be completely reliant on getting a job. The second thing I would say is that if you do really want that job, which I think is totally reasonable, um, the advice I always tell people is use every unfair advantage you have. So unfair advantage means, oh, I have alumni network. I have a connection. I have someone who can refer me into that particular company. Or, oh, I know a lot about this particular industry, like the dairy industry or the meat industry, or I know a lot about, uh, you know, computing theory, whatever it might be, some very topic, some very special topic. That's an unfair advantage that you have that most people don't have. So now you can leverage that, find a company that operates in that specific niche. And your chance of getting an interview, getting a job there is way higher. Or leverage that friend you have. Not everyone has your friend as a friend. So leverage them to get a connection and referral into a company and your chance of uh, landing a job. What do you see, what skills or habits do software engineers have that enable them to have an exponential learning curve, right? So in all of these companies, when they go, who are the people that are getting the best opportunities and the best growth possible? Yes. Okay. So first of all, I just want to say that I like the way you phrase the question because so often I think on Twitter and LinkedIn, people will ask me, oh, which programming language should I learn to get the best opportunity? Should I learn Python or JavaScript or, uh, you know, Kotlin or whatever it might be? Or like, what technology will be hot? And those are okay questions. I'm not saying those are bad questions. But I think what I like about the way you phrased it is you're talking more about what are the underlying skills beyond the technology that help people succeed? And that's so critical because software right. engineers, the best software engineers, frankly, they don't care about the technology. They don't care if you're using Python or JavaScript or Kotlin. They care about- It is just a tool. It's a tool, exactly. And are you able to communicate effectively? Can you decompose problems? Can I trust that you're going to deliver things on time? To get to your question more directly, I think the big, uh, the big kind of trends I'm seeing are, do you have experience shipping something end to end? I think more and more, the friction to actually be able to publish something. You know, like 20 years ago, it was actually very hard for a single developer to build something. But today, within a day, within a week, I could publish a whole Android app or a whole web app literally in one week. And so if you don't have that ability, like you haven't proven to me either in a past job or on your portfolio that you can do that, that's kind of a red flag at this point. So that's like one big trend. Like you really need to show evidence that you're able to ship something. And I think the other thing I would say is um, the ability to work on a team. So either, you know, being a consultant or freelancer and showing that, hey, I can take in work and do it and deliver high quality, or just like, you know, being on a team where you've worked closely with other people. I think that's another huge critical skill because anything meaningful in life gets done as a team effort. So my next question would be for the future of software engineers, right? Is software development in general going to be replaced by AI? Now that we are seeing DALI, we have seen stable diffusion, we have seen you know GPT-3 come up. So what is the future for both software engineers as well as for designers according to you? And we've, also, we've already seen uh, OpenAI Codex, we've also seen GitHub Copilot. So what do you think about this? Yeah, great question. And I think this is something that I've talked about a lot with people who are anxious, like, hey, I'm doing software engineering, I'm doing computer science in college. Will there be a job for me in 10 years as AI becomes more and more advanced? And, and, and don't get me wrong, AI will inevitably become more advanced. I think unlike Web3, there are tons and tons of application for artificial intelligence to actually start doing more and more tasks that we're 
we're currently doing today as humans? And so I do think it's a really good question and something we should be thinking about. Short answer is that no. Software engineers and designers will not be replaced by design by AI. But there's like a nuance there, which is that there will be parts of the job, and in fact, a large part of the job, which will be replaced. But I think the core thing to keep in mind here is that the point of tools like GitHub Copilot and these other AI-based tools for programmers are that they're focusing on programming. So you say, hey, here's a very well-defined task I want to accomplish. Here's what I want the program to do, and it will write the code for you. But the core thing to understand is that programming or coding is not equal to software engineering. In fact, if you look at the most senior engineers at a company like Facebook, where I worked, or any other top company, I would say only about half my time, or maybe 30% of my time was actually coding, like hands on keyboard, writing out code. The other 50 to 70% of my time was spent talking to people, decomposing a, a problem, figuring out the contract between my team and a neighboring team, figuring out what is the actual thing we want to build, right? That actually turned out to be the much more creative process, the much more, I would say, difficult part of software engineering. And so when we talk about like the impact of AI on engineering, I think that AI will certainly, at some point, it might completely take away the 30% of the job, which is coding. But the best engineers will actually have a big part of their job, a big part of their responsibility, which is everything else. And so my, my warning to you is that if you feel like your job is mechanical, like you're just writing a for loop every day, you're doing the same thing again and again, there's no creativity behind it, you should be worried. GitHub Copilot will probably come and replace your job in a few years. So that's why like you need to uh, build up other skills. And actually, that's the whole point of Taro, right? The, the point of Taro is how can we build up engineers to be uh, more impactful in ways that are not relevant to the code. And using right. skills like Taro or other platforms, you need to build up those skills so that you're not going to be replaceable by an AI. Certainly, there's a lot of improvements in AI that we have come a very long way from, you know, right from the time when... You were first starting out with, you know, alpha and like the chess game that you were trying to see how AI defeated the, you know, the grandmaster over there. But yeah, thank you so much for joining us here and sharing your insights. Let me know what is your thoughts, people who are still watching this video till the very end. What do you think about all of this? If you have any questions, let us know about that in the comment section down below as well. Rahul, all the best with your startup Taro. Congratulations on the YC seed fund. And I hope that you go to greater places in the next few years. Yeah, I appreciate it. And also we do have a video on my channel also with Ishan. So we can leave a link for that in the, in the description. It's always super fun talking to you, Ishan. Definitely. Thanks for, thanks for doing that. Thank you so much, Rahul. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Yeah, have a great day. Bye.